Welcome to On Networking. Conversations with thought leaders in networking technologies. Brought to you by I'm guessing that a lot of people out there who are going to listen to this are going to say, well, um, why not make a implementation uh, type of certification like the CCIE in, in any of the tracks a prerequisite for this, since it seems to be pitched as a, a very advanced sort of certification. Right. Okay. So the CCD is a prerequisite for the board exam at this point. The CCIE may, with some experience or some level of experience, also count as a prerequisite mm -hmm. for the board exam. Those mm -hmm. decisions haven't been made okay. yet. The CCD itself has no prereqs just because we didn't feel like there was anything that could prereq for it. Mm -hmm. So um, when you're out there looking at customer networks, uh, or even looking at you know, Cisco internal networks, what are some of the design problems or design issues that you see that you're hoping maybe that, uh, can be uh, helped out by people with this certification? Okay, so a lot of the design problems we're seeing today are actually falling around too much redundancy, too much parallelism, and uh, trying to fight to get five nines, but in a way that's not really practical, not using good high availability techniques mm -hmm. merged with resi to get, give you resiliency combined with redundancy. Um, we're still seeing an awful lot of very big flat network designs where there's not a lot of good hierarchy built into the network. Um, the other challenge we're starting to see now is people are starting to look at virtualization. Virtual routers, um, sorts of 802.1Q VNet or VLANs of various types and things of that nature. And all that virtualization make the net makes the network design very difficult to handle mm -hmm. in a lot of cases. Uh, finally, a lot of things we're seeing, we're seeing a lot more application requirements on the network. Voice over IP has some very strict requirements. People are rolling that out today. Uh, things of that nature where we get a lot more applications that are very, much more time and delay sensitive and, and convergence time critical in the network. So we're seeing a lot of that go on as well. What about uh, with these certifications? Are there going to be any requirements for channel partners to retain CCDEs or master level architects or anything um, like that? So we're working with the channel program right now to figure out exactly how they want to handle it. I think at this point they're kind of waiting to see how much of the certification takes off, how many mm -hmm. people get certified in the CCDE before they add it to their requirements. So changing the subject a little bit, you've written a, a whole lot of books for Cisco Press that uh, I've found very useful, for instance, in CCIE preparation. Uh, you've got a, a one on optimal routing design. Uh, you've got a new book on Ceph, I believe. Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about those? Okay, so optimal routing design is actually a rewrite of advanced IP network design based on a four or five more years of experience of working with real network designs in the real world. It's very theoretical. Uh, we're actually kind of working on one now that has more practical hands-on stuff uh, with Cisco Press. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an interesting, the an interesting area of work that we're still working on. And there's probably going to be plans at some point to do a book that backs up the CCDE certification more explicitly. Um, the Cisco Express forwarding book actually was supposed to be a follow-on to um, inside Cisco IOS software architecture. Uh, but we ended up just focusing on Cisco Express Forwarding because we found there was so much material just in Cisco Express Forwarding mm -hmm. to talk about there. What are some things, uh, talking about Ceph specifically, that uh, you find interesting or that you uh, find that customers need to know? Uh, so from a routing perspective, and the main reason I touch Ceph is because of a routing perspective, is that I really care about how load sharing works, how the packets are actually switched in the router so I can understand a lot of the questions about what does convergence speed mean when you actually talk about installation in the rib and in the Ceph table and how those things work and how long it takes for Ceph to switch from one path to another and how much memory it takes up and how much forwarding time it takes up to actually have tables of certain sizes mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, so Cisco Express forwarding itself is a fascinating subject because it's of course on every platform, on every, in every train of iOS. There's a lot of features. There's been a recent rewrite that's actually changed a lot of the way Cisco Express forwarding works, particularly in the area of MPLS tagging and in load sharing and the way features are implemented in the switching path. Um, from, so trying to tie this back into the, the certification thing, what, uh, when we talk about design, uh, 
what relationship do you think there is between design and preparing for some of the advanced sort of implementation certifications like CCIE? I guess the reason I'm asking this is that that um, I don't see a lot of people doing CCIE preparation reading design books, but uh, I found reading design uh, books and SRDs and so forth to be one of the most important parts uh, in uh, preparing for my CCIE. For your CCIE, okay. Yeah. So CCIE, really, the biggest part I think design would play in, in doing the CCIE exam is in protocol theory and understanding how the protocols work mm -hmm. and how they're actually implemented in the real world. So a CCIE is not just a troubleshooter, they're also the person that goes out and puts rubber on the road and does the configuration of the routers. Understanding where the design is supposed to go, what the designer intended when they designed the network, and what actual configurations will make sense within that design, it makes a huge impact. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly from a manageability perspective, we always say use the simplest configuration and make the point of control as close to the actual point where you, action, where you want the action to take place to be. Well, that's very helpful if you're a CCIE to understand those principles and, and be able to implement mm -hmm. them in an actual network. Right. Relating it to uh, Cisco Press, what are some uh, other titles that you might recommend for people prefer preparing either for CCIE or CCDE? Okay. Um, so, top-down network design, I think, is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, Jeff Doyle's books on how the, the entire routing protocol theory stuff has been very good. Routing TCPIP Volume 1 and Volume 2 and the next editions are coming out or have come out. Um, and I think that's pretty much it in the CCIE mm -hmm. or in the Cisco Press mm -hmm. series. That's The Edge ERP design and implementation is pretty good. There's some Madison Wesley books, but mm -hmm. they don't want to know about that either. <laughs> 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 we don't want to talk about it as much. So but we've got we also got optimal routing design. Yes, we also have optimal routing design, but you mentioned that one before. Okay, yeah. And advanced IP network design, but that's just the older version. So, okay. So um, one other question uh, regarding design certification. Let's say that I'm you know really just getting into the uh, network design world. Uh, what do I do if I want to, say, pursue CCIE or CCDE certification or if I want to just become a better network designer? Uh, so my best advice would be to get the broadest experience that you can. To get as much experience at Layer 2, Layer 3, and application, and with applications, actual implementation of applications as much as you can. Uh, to spend time looking at the books and the best practices for design and just broaden your experience. The second thing that I would say is learn the protocol theory. Learn how OSPF works, learn how EDGRP works, learn how ISIS works, learn how BGP works, learn how layer two protocols and concepts imp apply or impact the designs that you're doing or that you're looking at. For instance, um, one very common problem we see is Ethernet, what a service provider may call Ethernet, may not be Ethernet, it may be something else. Well, if you understand the underlying concepts and principles behind how a service provider provides or sells an Ethernet service, then you understand what types of questions and what things you need to look for in doing a design with a Metro E service provided by some service provider in a local area. So I think theory and um, theory and interaction, understanding interactions is really the key to the design world at this point. Well, great. Thanks a lot for uh, being with us today, Russ. Sure. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you again. Yeah, we'll see you again in the future. For more information, visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts. Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education.